guys, Tech Manning here, also known as Matthew Rivera, and today it's not going to be a reaction video. We're going to take a break from that, and we are going to review another product from Fine Fine Technologies, and it's called the KO38. Now, this product right here, this one is going to drastically improve sort of audio in a way because I've been using the MXL990 condenser microphone, which I am using right now. This one is a wireless microphone system. So it has a lapel or lavalier mic, and then it has a, I guess you can call it over the ear or pop star microphone, you can call it. And of course, Fine Fine is awesome enough to send this out to me. And I absolutely love their customer service, everything about them. They, their products are very, very good. And I feel like Fine Fine's products are made for beginners and for people who need to start up something with something cheap and not go like 500 for all these wireless things and all that. I did review one of the Fine Finds products. The link will be in the description box below. And that microphone, it's a dynamic microphone. It's wonderful. It has an amazing sound and it's very good for beginners who want to either start YouTube, want to start doing music covers, do songs, record instruments, whatever. It ju it's just a beginning product to get them into what they're doing and then when they get enough money to get like a condenser microphone or a um, omnidirectional or a shotgun microphone, any type of microphone to do anything. That and other products from Fine Fine will help you get there without going 500 or even even actually a thousand dollars trying to get all these top of the line equipment. I've been using the MXL 990 and you've been seeing for a very long time with the microphone being on the side right here and for a few videos it was nowhere to be found because it was over my head like this and um, well, that didn't go well. <laughs> Both of these audio interfaces are connected to a hub right over here under the Mac. And they are, they are connected via a aggregate driver, I guess you can call it. Mac, you can create a aggregate and I combined it the two. So I have one, two, three, four through this and then five, six through that. So I have six audio inputs for recording things or whatever for like anything that I need it for. Anyways guys, I am so excited to review and unbox this. So without further ado, I haven't said that in a while, let's get started. Okay, so looking at the box, we don't have much of anything. We have the logo on top. Nothing much, nothing big, nothing too extraordinary. It's just a box to cover whatever's in there. Okay, so we are greeted with this bookmark looking thing. It's just a explanation on reviewing the product or, or something like that. And then of course we have the manual. This manual has tons and tons of information in it about the system, how to set it up, how to do everything about that. This manual is so massive and it has stuff on the opposite side as well, which is pretty cool. So I will be reading that later on. Okay, so this is the first mic pack. There are both two of them. And I like how just small and lightweight it is. That's what I like about it because it won't weigh your pants or your belt down. It doesn't feel like a hunk of something just in your in your pants or on your pants. Anywhere you place it, it's very, very light. Uh, 
Alrighty, here's the second one. This is Mike Pack C, or Mike C. Okay, so, oh, that's the, let's save that for later. <laughs> that's the main event here. I believe this is all the power cables and all the other cables or cores that plug into your audio interface, mixer, all that jazz. Okay, so this is the batteries. There's two of them for both mic packs. That's pretty cool. Alrighty, so next up is the power adapter or power cable, however you want to call it. Pretty small, very convenient. I like how small it is. The next thing is a 1 4th to 1 4th male to male TRS, which is tip ring sleeve. It's called an unbalanced cable because of one wire in it and the rest is isolated and it's accessible to interference like radio signals. The next thing is a TRS cable to a 3.5 millimeter. For this demonstration, I used the male to male TRS cable, not the one that's shown here. And last but not least, we have a 3.5 to 3.5 male cable, which is also known as an aux cable. Alrighty, moving on to this big box, and I assume this has all the microphones because that's the last box, and yes it does. So we have here is a pop star or headset, whatever you want to call it. And as you can see, it sits on my head quite nice, but I have a small head, so the earlobes thing don't really match up to my ears. And here's the lav mics. You can call them lav, lavalier, lapel microphones, however you call it, it's correct. And this is what I'm going to be using for my channel, not the headset. And that might change, you never know. Okay, so we are at the main event and here it is. The actual unit itself. Alrighty, so this is a metal construction or metal casing. It's pretty heavy, well made. So we have the DC power plug, then we have the aux out which you can connect to like a speaker. Then we have two 3.5 millimeter jacks. The out one can go to a speaker and then the in one can come from like a phone to play music through that speaker. Okay, moving on to the front, you have mic A and volume A, which you can connect a dynamic or another wireless 1 4th inch jack into that. A volume B knob, which connects to the mic pack B, so you can attenuate that knob to adjust the volume of the microphone pack B. And then you have the echo, which is pretty self-explanatory. Whatever connected device you have it gives you echo you have the power button you have three indicator light the two green ones are for the both mic pack b and c and the middle one the red one is for the power you have the music knob to adjust the volume of the music that you connected in the back you have volume c which goes to mic pack c then you have volume d which goes to mic d one fourth connector Okay, so as I said, this thing weighs a pretty good amount. It doesn't feel crappy in any way. So let's clean this mess up and do an overview of what we got here. Okay, moving from left to right, we have the two headsets, two loves. We have the power cable, the transmitter, the male to male one fourth cable, that little bookmark thing, the manual, the one fourth to 3.5 millimeter cable, the 3.5 to 3.5 cable or aux cord, the two battery packs, and last but not least, the two batteries that belong to the mic packs. So for $82, you do get a lot of stuff here. It's well worth $82 for getting all this stuff with the two headsets, the lavs, the cables, 
everything about this you get so much for $82. Now the only thing to do now is set it up and test it. So let's get started. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that GoPro view. It was something different and I know it was out of focus, but by me doing more unboxings and all that and using the GoPro, of course, it will get even better. Okay, so this video is a few days in the making because of an issue with the receiver. Long story short is that the receiver had issues and me and the guy that I talked to, thank you so much for helping me, man. But the issue was the receiver, how it was creating a hissing noise and it was outputting very little sound. So we both troubleshooted the issue and we isolated it to the receiver and I got a replacement and it's working completely fine. Thank you so much, Lan. That's the guy who I've been talking to. Thank you so much for helping me. You are awesome for helping me out with this because I was going around in circles trying to figure this out. Okay, so the first test we're going to do is the lapel. And let me explain a few things to you. Now, I didn't know this, that the receiver, transmitter, and both the headphone and lavalier have specs. And I didn't know that the receiver and or the transmitter had specs. So it'll be right here somewhere. Now with a lavalier, you can place it on a suit right here on its collar. You can place it on a tie. You can place it on your collar right here as I place it here, or you can actually place it inside your shirt. And I will tell you why you can't really do with, with this one later on. Now my MXL 990, which you are hearing me through right now, is a condenser microphone which requires 48 volts of phantom power. The MXL 990 is going into my Behringer Euphoria UMC404 HD. And during this demonstration, I won't be able to use the MXL 990 because this wireless system does not involve 48 volt phantom power. When you apply phantom power to a wireless receiver that does not require it, sometimes it can fry the entire system. So right now you are hearing me through the lavalier as you can see. I'm very surprised on how clear it is but also the downside to it being clear is it being very flat. The dynamic range isn't as clear as the headset as I'm going to show you later on. But of course you can add effects in your DAW. I like how small it is but also comfortable it is. It doesn't feel like it's weighing your shirt down. It's very light. I'm using Mic Pack B and this Mic Pack is very light but also you can place it in your pant pocket. You can place it in your back pocket on your belt. It's very light and it won't weigh your clothing down. As for ladies, they can clip it to their dress or any type of wearable things a ladies wear. Now because this microphone sounds so flat, I'm going to add effects to make it more warmth. The lavalier sounds flat, but also it has just a tiny bit dynamic range to it. You can hear it, but it's not as much as you want it to be. The lavalier microphone is what I'm going to be using for my reaction videos or for any type of application and maybe later on i'll use the headset for whatever thing i need to use it for overall this lavalier is pretty good i like how comfortable it is and it's just overall very nice the quality of it is very nice as well as it being very light that's what i like about it it doesn't feel like it's weighing my shirt down for a lavalier microphone there's a few things you can use it for there's a plant mic you can use it on your shirt and also you can use it on your chest. Let me explain. What a plant mic is that you basically grab a mic pack and a lavalier and you can place it anywhere on stage. It's more prominently used in Broadway and musicals but you can use it for maybe recording something or hiding a microphone in a way to record an external sound. But basically you just place the mic pack and the microphone somewhere that's not shown to the audience and basically that dead space of an area that people have like a one-liner or two or it's a bunch of people talking in a certain area, that microphone will pick up their dialogue and they won't wear microphones that they just need one line to say. That's what a plant mic is and in fact in my old high school when I was in Oklahoma they used a plant mic on a house prop on stage, which was pretty cool and I didn't even know what it was for. But as I went into college and started learning about audio and all this, I learned what a plant mic is. 
and sometimes a plant mic can also be a plant literally you can hide it in a plant or any type of thing that's not visible to the audience the second thing you can use is of course as I'm using it right now and as I said before is using it on your collar the third thing you can use this for is on your chest now the problem with this being a condenser and just being an overall big thing is that I wouldn't recommend placing it on your chest let me explain so right now you are hearing me through the lavalier that's on my chest I'm holding it through my shirt so the problem with it being on your chest and trying to hide it is because when you start shuffling your clothing and moving around you will hear you will hear your skin on your chest and also the ruffling of your clothing so I don't recommend using this for hiding it in your chest if it's smaller probably you can get away with that so this is what the lavalier sounds like completed with effects that I'm probably going to be using and adjusting when I do reaction videos or any type of videos that I don't want to use the condenser microphone, the MXL 994. So this is what the lavalier sounds like. This is what the MXL 990 sounds like. Okay, obviously now you are hearing me through the headset. And to mention, I am using the same mic pack, which is mic pack B for both of these tests. Now because of the headset being so close to your mouth, it's going to have much more of a dynamic range and it's going to be louder because it's much more closer to your face unlike this one which is just a few like a foot or a few inches away from your mouth. Within this one, it's a few inches, not even. Now I do like the sound of this in a way, but the problem is that as you can hear, it's going to have a lot of plosives. So if I say berries, pencil, pens, pills, Pennsylvania, baseball, basketball, it's just a lot of plosives to it. So that's why I don't recommend if you're talking to somebody in an interview, use the lavalier because of the plosives and it's going to be very annoying. Now for my reaction videos, I won't be using this because of the plosives and it just being on my face and it's just a little too much. So for headsets, there's always a sweet spot for these things. And the most convenient one is just the one that goes over the ear and it stops right around your cheek. It's an amazing type of of microphone that it won't get all those plosives in it overall i am very surprised with the sound quality of the headset and how it just clear it is in a way but also it has a lot more dynamic range than the lavalier now i don't know if i'm going to add effects but i'm going to add them right now the headset does have on both sides foam things here that will protect your face from it being digging in but if you wear this for a while these things will feel like it will be digging into your head and as you can see my head is very small so i have to push this all the way up against my head for it to fit and as you can see the loop here for the ear it's supposed to be right here and there's a huge gap right here so I have to move it up for it to fit comfortably and these earlobe things won't really fit my small head. The headset can also move around as a gooseneck. This is what is a gooseneck. It's, it's adjustable so you can move it any which way you want. Unlike the lavalier, if you turn your head, you will lose the sound of your voice because you're moving farther away from the mic. But with a headset, you move around and your voice is constantly there. That's one of the pros for a headset. And that's why I also like headsets. Unlike lapel or lavalier microphones, which you move your head and the distance from your mouth to the microphone is just automatically cut. Usually headset wires that go into the mic pack, which is right in my pocket right here, it goes on the back of your neck, down your back and into your mic pack. Sometimes if you're talking at an event, you might wanna do that with the wire behind your back. And if you're doing a musical performance or any type of performance that involves singing or dancing or anything choreography planned, you don't want that cord swaying around in front of you. You want it tucked into your clothing on your back. And of course, with the mic packs, it's more convenient to place it on the back of your pants 
or anything on the back of anywhere for it not to tug on the wire and also for you not to feel constrained and you can't really move your neck. So as I said, as I was reviewing the lavalier that you can place this in your pocket, but for headsets, I recommend for you to stick it on your belt in your back pocket or for ladies, you can put it in your dress or any wearable things that ladies wear. So overall, I'm very happy with the headset, but on a few occasions, I will use the headset, but for my reactions, I won't be using this at all. So I don't know if I'm gonna add effects or not to this headset, but this is what the headset sounds like with or without effects. This is what the MXL990 sounds like. Okay, so we are back with the MXL990. The lavalier and headset and basically all of this system is very surprising. Because of me having a faulty receiver that I basically gave a bad review before I got the new one because I thought the hissing noise was just the receiver and my the systems weren't compatible with each other. I did a lot of troubleshooting. I even plugged the AC, moved the entire system over to a different outlet. Same issue, it was still quiet. I gave all these bad reviews and basically it completely changed my opinion. Because of the receiver being so bad and also it having a very low volume that I just basically gave it a very low rating. And for $82, this system is perfect. It's perfect for the needs of school plays, beginning YouTubers who want to do interviews that want to do wireless. And I love this system for $82. It's perfect. And since the receiver is replaced, there's only one downside that I see in this and it is the low volume. So if they can get rid of the hissing noise and also the low volume, that's not as low as it was with the old one, but it's decent low that you have to boost it up a little bit. If they get rid of that, those two issues, it will be perfect. Another thing is that the system is absolutely amazing for what you get for $82. You get two headsets, two lavaliers, two mic packs, two batteries, all these different cables to plug it into any type of situation you are in. And of course the receiver and it's it's really a good buy, really it is. So it's your choice if you wanna spend $82 with what I'm using it for, which is reaction videos or type of anything that doesn't involve the MXL 990. I'm gonna rate this and Amazon has five stars. So I'm gonna rate this a 4.5 out of five. Why I rated it that high is because the price is very decent. You're not spending 100, 200 or plus more on a wireless system. The things you get in it is pretty good. You get all this stuff for $82. The sound quality is pretty decent for the price range. But the two main factors is that the hissing and the audio is very quiet and the hissing, I don't know if that's the receiver or the Behringer, but if they can fix those two things, this will have been a five out of five for me. Now there is one thing that I mentioned in the beginning that I'm using a one fourth to one fourth male to male cable that's going out of the receiver and into my Behringer line in. The problem with a 1 4th to 1 4th TRS male cable is that TRS stands for tip ring sleeve, which is the tip and then that ring and then the sleeve. The problem with that is it's called an unbalanced cable. Unbalanced cables are known for interference issues like radio frequencies or any type of electromagnetic frequencies that you can actually hear. What an unbalanced cable is that you have that rubber coating and then inside of it is this ground wire and then one wire isolated around that. So it's not protected in all this way like a balanced XLR or a balanced cable is. And unbalanced has a one, two, three cables in it, which is a ground and then one, two. A balanced XLR or a balanced cable is recommended because of how much cables and isolation is in it. So what happens is that if you have like an XLR condenser or a dynamic, basically your voice hits the diaphragm on the microphone. It creates an electrical current that goes through the XLR. And basically it's like this, but then it flips the polarity. So basically it's like this, and then it flips it again when it gets to the board or whatever mixing area you are going to. So if a radio frequency hits this current that's going through the 
XLR or a balanced cable, the radio frequency or any, or any type of frequency is going to bounce off that cord or the insulation in it. So that is why a XLR balanced or just in general, a balanced cable is recommended for something like wireless or condensers or dynamics. So basically in general, what I'm saying is that if this receiver was an XLR output as of modern and usual type of wireless in so wireless systems that I don't think the hissing nor the interference, if there is any, will happen because of the flipping priority, as I said. So basically if the audio was louder, it didn't have a hissing noise and it had a balanced XLR cable in the back, I think this would be way worth five stars it'll be a thousand stars so basically that is my review and i give it a 4.5 because this system for 82 dollars and what you get with it and the sound quality is amazing it's awesome for beginners because you're not spending 100 or 200 plus dollars on a wireless system have you subscribed yet if not what are you doing you should there's something called a notification bell and when you press that you will get notified whenever i upload a video like this or any type of video Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Fine, fine, and Lan. Lan is the guy that I've been talking to that helped me with this receiver and also that promoted the K6 microphone that will be linked in the description box below. It's a dynamic microphone. He's the one that contacted me throughout this entire <laughs> catastrophe of the receiver being bad, and he's been helping me a lot. Thank you so much, man, and thank you, fine, fine, for this amazing opportunity and i look forward to reviewing much more of your products the ko38 is amazing i absolutely love it and i will definitely be using this for reaction videos and content that i will create in the future again guys thank you so much for watching fine fine thank you so much for sending this out to me you guys are amazing and i look forward to working with you with other products anyways guys again thank you so much for watching and this is the Tech Manny signing off. See you later, guys.